Right, Joaquin, welcome. Thank you so much for doing this. No problem, thank you. So I suppose the f most natural first question would be to ask you to reflect on your time that you've been here. And uh, when you signed for Hoyefko, I think we had about five players signed. Now there's a bit more. But what are some of the most crucial changes that have been made in the last month? I think as uh, we've said at the beginning, uh, in the first uh, couple of uh, couple of times that we that we met, uh, is that we we wanted to change uh, how things were run in every every day basis, change the environment, uh, make everything as professional as possible, and I think it's it's been very good, very positive. Uh, in these few weeks, we've put a lot of processes together. We put a lot of uh, things in place that we just not need to keep uh, reviewing and keep improving. Uh, but we are in a good place now to start the, uh, the rest of the year uh, or the pre-season now after, the, after these few weeks and, and get ready for, for when the, uh, the league season starts. And we've already touched on this uh, in your first video, but now that you've spent some time with the team and develop it a bit further, what do you think are the biggest or will become the biggest pillars of Hoyevko's style of play? What we've done is that we've, we've identified some values and some um, um, bigger aspects of our game that we want to, to keep reflecting on. Um, we want to be a relentless team, a team with a lot of energy um, that, that doesn't get down or that doesn't give up at any point. We're, gonna, we're just going to keep fighting, we're going to keep uh, trying to make it better regardless of what the situation of the game or the season the season is. That's a big pillar for, for, for us. Uh, then we want to be a horrible team to play against. And no one should be able to say uh, after playing against us that it's been easy. Uh, if someone wants to beat us, they're going to have to do something uh, better than us to be able to to get those those points away away from us, uh, and it will be important. It, how do we do this? How we defend? And I think uh, people can already see that you know we, are, we want to be a proactive, high pressing team. So that is the second one, and then we want to be a, an expansive and um, brave team in possession that doesn't make it easier. That doesn't make it easy for the uh, for the position in, in terms of how. Uh, we play our systems and, and how we move and how fluid we are in possession and we are getting there we are getting better day by day week uh, week by week and uh, you know and, and the last thing you'll be scoring lots of goals that's what everyone wants we uh, is something probably the, is the next step to to get to get better but um, but yeah we will get there those those will be the things that we keep reflecting on to make sure that we we, however it hap whatever happens, and whichever way we, we go, we don't lose sight of who we want to be. And that's what, what we will keep giving feedback from. So as I mentioned, I think there were five players that were signed. So it was obviously going to be a really hectic period when you joined and a lot of, a lot of the decisions were going to have to be made. So could you tell us a little bit about the player recruitment and team building process from your perspective? Yeah, well, it, it was you know, you can see it from the most challenging way possible that it, we didn't have many players. Uh, but the way that we looked at it is that well, we got a, pretty much a blank canvas that we can that we can uh, make it look however we wanted to make it look. And uh, it's been a lot of hard work um, from everyone, everyone at the club, um, Mika, sporting director, and, um, Christopher, the CEO, and then everyone. Um, all the all the members of the staff because we've had to do a lot of things. We have to do it many hours. We have to do a lot of research. Uh, we have to, you know, organize a lot of things for players coming from abroad. Uh, trials from players. You know, it's been it's been a, a challenging but a very good, a very good way to for every all of us to get to get to know each other and to work together towards getting that group of players. Um, you know the best group of players that we could have. The only challenge was, uh, you know, uh, the financial side of things. Like it will be for everyone at these times. But uh, I think we've done okay. We've done okay. We brought a specific type of players that we think that would be good and will embrace our environment, and uh, our way of playing and our way of working will make them better. And however the situation was before they came here, that they become or they leave. 
or whenever they leave the club, they are in a better place. At the end of the season, they, they you know, them individually, they are in better places than they were a few weeks ago. Uh, if that happens, I'm pretty sure that us as a team will be in a better place as well. A month ago, you spoke about the team going from a pre-season style training week to a match training week for Suomen Cup, and then eventually back to a pre-season. And now, of course, Suomen Cup is continuing for us, but how are the training sessions built and how do you determine the focus and content of them? Yeah, it's, it's, um, the differences between a, a pre-season week and a, and a, and a competition week is, 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 is big. It's big because um, on a pre-season uh, week, your loading and conditioning is, um, is very important, as well as implementing the principles of play our way of play, our values, uh, in every session, in every way possible, using every practice to, to be able to do that. When you get into a competition week, is week by week. You're coming from a game and you go into a game. Um, so you got to reflect on the last game, try to move on from that as soon as possible, take the positive, uh, trying to improve the little things that you, you need to do better, and then start preparing for the following game. And um, you know, we've we've one of the things that we've done is that because the competition came early, we have been able to to introduce those uh, that structure of the week. Um, on the Monday, we try to get you know get over the feedback of of the last game. Uh, try to put it to bed. Uh, use that Monday as a way of improving uh, a top up for the one that, that the ones that didn't play, and then from then on, the new week starts. So on Tuesday, it's a double session. Um, it's a double session, um, and that's when the introduction for the following game comes. We talk a little bit about the opposition, uh, what things we need to be aware. It's the biggest conditioning day that we got on that Tuesday. But everything, you know, with with playing football and and, and working in our in our principles, and and then on Thursday it's about how we how we win the game. Uh, we make it quite simple. It's a bit simplistic to say, but it's how we win the game on Thursday. Uh, you know, the type of sessions are bigger. It's still level session. There's a gym session in the afternoon as well. And then Fridays are lighter. Uh, get mentally ready to play that game. Feel good um, to hopefully go on the Saturday and try to win the game. Uh, but that's basically how we how we prepare for for the competition. And I know, or I heard some rumors about that you have an internal Champions League competition. Could you explain this to us yeah, a little bit better? Yeah, it comes from a few years ago. I've done it, I think I've done it in every club I've been. Um, for the last four or five clubs that I've been, it comes from one of the head coaches uh, that I worked work with, Nathan Jones. He, he, you know, he said that it was something that he was doing when, when he, he was in good, in good clubs, that he brings a little bit of competition, healthy competition within the team and, you know, that's the little things that we could do during the week to, you know, implement some uh, some values and be competitive is one of them individually. So, um, yeah, it's parts of the week. Uh, there's a competition, it might be small side games, it might be a finishing, it might be something different. And if you win as your team, you get an individual point and then it goes into a um, table, Champions League table, uh, I think they put the worst pictures that they can find from you on the internet and, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit of fun. And then at the end of the season, it's quite interesting to see who, what players are uh, on top of that, of that table. We get a little price, depending on how, uh, how much uh, we, can, uh, we can afford, uh, maybe one or two prizes for the top two uh, to have something nice at the end of the season. But yeah, it's uh, something that we quite enjoy doing and it's, it worked quite well uh, for, for me in, in other clubs I've been. And uh, continuing a bit up on the, on the training, uh, Anthony M has now been on your side since the beginning and you mentioned that having someone there who knows you was really important to you and now uh, Hanno Patronen has stepped up and become a part of the first team coaching staff and I'm wondering how you have divided the responsibility, responsibilities if you have and uh, how has this been working? Yeah, for me, having Anti. I knew that I was coming and that auntie, even if it was for a couple of weeks, he was going to help me uh, settle down and uh, settle in, settling in and it, it was so important for me just to know, uh, knowing that you've got someone that knows you, that you've got that relationship with, uh, 
sometimes to tell you what things you <laughs> shouldn't do or you should do better. Um, he's got great experience, still has it coaching wise, but playing wise, you know, you know, he's one of the best players that Finland Finland has, has, pro, has produced. So it's important to have someone like 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 uh, like him with with us, not just for me, but for the players. You know, he's, he's got always a little bit of piece of advice for someone, and uh, believe it or not, it's quite. He's quite funny, so he's quite good to have him around. So, yeah, and then the rest of the staff we started um, uh, with Miguel. Uh, Miguel is going back to to the second team. Uh, we've we've been using um, Hanu was always going to be part of the of the coaching staff somehow, but we don't want to take him away uh, from the from the playing side. So we were going to try to balance it out, but unfortunately he had a. Um, small injury that has kept him away from training with the team for a few weeks, and he's been he's been part of it. He's uh, he want to he want to coach him to be uh, his pathway in the future, and and he sees that he can do a little bit of that with us, and and start getting you know getting more interested and see how everything works. I think he understands now that days are a little bit longer. When you're a, when you're a coach, but, but yeah, what he's been doing is he's been doing a little bit of everything. When we divide the groups, then Auntie and and Hanu take uh, smaller groups, so that gives me a little bit of a space to go to. We give gives us a little bit more um, a space and time to work more in detail with with individuals. Um, and you know him giving his position, so he's been giving some advice to the younger ones, to players that are playing in those uh, defending positions, and, and yeah, it's. Uh, it's been good, but not only not only them too. I think yeah, all the stuff that we got in here, very good. All has been a massive part of everything that we've done since I've been here. Great help. It does a little bit of everything. The, the, as an analyst, is very good as well. It's helping us to do to do that. And then you know, Risto as a, as a head of sports science is you know is is giving giving that advice and and, and putting that that program together and those are specific to make sure that we keep developing the players physically as well not just in the short term but in the long term as well so yeah we're quite quite happy with the uh, with the start that we, we that we that we have out of all the people you've met in football which is i'm guessing quite a lot of people since you've been in different clubs and in england and so yeah. on and you've been here so and so on uh, who's the person who's had the biggest impact on you and how i think um I've been very fortunate to be able to share experiences with so many great professionals, not just coaches, but in every department. Um, but, um, you know, the head coaches that I, I have worked with, they have been the ones that have, you know, that have made the biggest impact because in my head it's always been that idea of uh, I wanted to become a head coach at some point. So, you know, I've, I've had... Uh, from um, Oscar Garcia, that was the first uh, head coach that gave me an opportunity to be in first in football. Um, you know where I come from. Everything for me was, you know, so um, um, groundbreaking, and you know, uh, having the opportunity to to learn about principles that I had learned in Barcelona all his life. It was it was a very very good step for me. Then I had some others like Sami Hippia for a short period of time, Chris Hutton even shorter, but I took little things from 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 each one of them. Even uh, Juha Malinen in the uh, in the national team under twenty ones, very experienced head coach, very organised. Um, he knows what he wants, um, and he, he he makes you feel part of everything that 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 he want he, he wants you to do, and. But probably the, the the biggest one is has been Nathan Jones because he's he's the one that I've spent most of the time with. Um, uh, we, we didn't always agree on everything, but uh, but yeah, he's the one that's had, that's had the biggest the biggest impact. He was the one that gave me the biggest responsibilities, uh, you know, and and with the one that I spent most most time. So I would have to say yeah, Nathan Jones. And. Following that question a bit, what is something that you wish you'd known in the beginning of your, of your career that you know now? Nothing. Nothing, completely nothing. I think uh, when I was younger, uh, when, you, when you're young, you, you, you don't value experience and experiences. But experiences teach, teach you a lot. And 
you know, I wouldn't do it any different way that I've done it because every step of the way I've learned something different and, you know, it wouldn't be the same. So nothing. I'd, and and you, the more that you know, the more that you understand you, you don't know. So you keep improving, you keep learning every day and this is how, the way that, that it should be. So, yeah, I don't think anything. anything. Okay. Did you always know that this was going to be the path in your life to yes. become a football manager? Yes. Uh, I understood very early in my football, very modest football career that I wasn't going to be uh, the best footballer ever. I wasn't going to be able to uh, make that my professional living. So um, I identified a way of getting into football that was my passion uh, through studying, going to university, do, you know, sports science, do my badges and this was always going to be um, what I wanted to do. Uh, you obviously set very small targets and you, when you are achieving it, but at the back of my mind, this was always going to be, uh, hopefully, um, this is only the start. Uh, you got to make it um, a, long, a long career. All right, I've asked you a lot of questions, so now it's time for the fans. Okay. I'm obviously going to ask them, but we've okay. gotten some questions from the fans. And the first one is from Angel and Seppo, who asked a similar question. And it is, is the squad completed now or are you still looking to bring on some players? And if so, which <coughs> po positions would need strengthening? Well, it's not about positions. It's about uh, whoever wants to come into this group now is going to be better than what we have or very different. Um, do we want to strengthen? Yes, you always want to do so. And as a club, you should always be looking to do to do that. Um, I don't think we're going to bring many many players. Maybe one or two, uh, one or two that just makes us better. Um, hopefully, sometime soon we get maybe maybe one, and then we'll just we'll see how uh, how we're going. But there won't be many, no. Frutinho asks, in one word, could you describe your first few weeks as a manager? Enjoyment. I have, uh, yeah, I've, I knew that I was going to enjoy it, but I've, I'm enjoying even the little problems, the little challenges, the little, every single little bit, uh, little bit, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I love my job, uh, I can't say, I, I think I said it after a session the other day, to the players, like, it's been such a good feeling, uh, they've been buying into everything that, we, that we're doing and it's just enjoyment. And Juho asks, what are the pros and cons of the 3-4-2-1 system for EFK? It's one of the systems that we play. <laughs> it's not the only system. I think it's very early for uh, people to see. But we, we are setting up into three different systems. And, and I think the, um, what we're trying to do is that we're not, we try not to enclose the players. We're not trying to minimize what they can do on the pitch. We try to maximize it. And, and I think one of the things that, that allows us is to be flexible and to adjust. In the end, um, formations are only a guide for the players to get organized in one of the phases. Defending, sometimes you're defending one in one formation or one type of shape and then uh, when you're attacking you're trying to use the spaces that the, uh, the opposition um, uh, gives you. So that's what we are working on at the moment. Um, that we are trying to be flexible so that yeah, the opposition cannot prepare that much about, about us when we, when we have the ball and, and, and try to, to make it work as, po as, you know, as good as possible. And Jarvis asks, do you ever stick your head out of the staff room and hear the players playing their music and think, what is this? Yeah, I've, I've been doing that for a long time, yeah. No, but you try. I, I'm interested. I'm interested because uh, obviously I don't know much about Finnish music, so I just ask the questions. I think it's a lot of them that they like this uh, Finnish rap. Um, but yeah, just, you know, you got to get to know what they like and to get to understand them a little bit better because uh, that's a way of engaging with each other. But yeah, some of it is uh, yeah a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, hard to understand. <laughs> yeah. And Seppo asks, what happened on the sideline between you and Lahti coach Seneli? Oh yeah, it did something, a bit of passion, you know, he's uh, quite, um, I thought I was going to be better when I was going to be a head coach, but I'm very passionate and 
some things uh, you know happen happen in football they just stay there stay on the pitch and then after the game he's a very good uh, very good coach he makes his team play um, good football a bit different um, you know got a lot of respect for him but then we just asking for a few things that I don't think that they need to be asked in football um, celebrating things that you don't celebrate in football there's some codes that I try to 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 follow and to respect and when I see the others don't I just I'd like to uh, ask no me but everyone that we protect our players and and we try to do you know the best for them and that's the that's what happened Wade asks, how are you coping with the cold in Finland? I'm okay, not too bad, I don't think. I thought it was going to be worse. I think once it goes minus from below zero, it's not that much different anymore. We've been okay, we've been okay. It's been very cold winter, uh, but I think when you go to snow, it makes it a little bit better, uh, more enjoyable, but it's, it's, it's been okay. All right, and this is a really important question. Jako asks, how do you take your coffee with milk or black? Black coffee. Espresso if possible, but if not, black coffee.